Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 8. In this video, I'm going to show you all the new changes in Google Apps that I spotted in October. So let me show you what's new with Google Apps, but before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Let's start with Gcam. If you are using Gcam version 8, the one ported from the Pixel 5 on your Pixel 4 or 4XL, and then go to settings, you will see under the video section a new toggle called audio zoom. As per the description, this feature will boost the sound coming out of your subject if you zoomed in on that subject and it will also reduce the background noise i didn't try this feature myself to know if it makes any difference but if you did please let me know in the comments also if you want to know how to get gcam version 8 on your pixel device you can check my previous video by clicking the link showing now on the screen or in the description below Next, Google Camera Go. And if you are not familiar with Google Camera Go, this is the official Google camera for budget phones. And this app didn't support any night modes previously. However, with the latest update, Google added a dedicated night mode that gets activated automatically based on the lighting condition in your scene. So you will not see a dedicated tab for the night mode, but the feature works automatically. So if you couldn't find a G cam for your phone, that will be a good alternative. But keep in mind, you will get limited functionality. Next, Google Photos. And the first change is in the share sheet. Now, as you see here, when I try to share a photo, I'm getting only four options at the bottom. And instead of having a very long list of apps listed horizontally, I get only the last couple of apps I used to share photos, the create link button and the more button. The more button used to be at the very end of the horizontal list so you have to keep scrolling but now you see it straight away and when you tap on more you will see the full list of apps you have on your device so you can scroll through them vertically and also you get a bigger interface to to select the app you want so it's now a lot easier to share photos from the google photos app next portrait light and this is the most exciting feature i used in google photos it will give you a light source that you can place anywhere in the frame. This light source will push more light towards your subject. So if you think you have parts of your subject that are not well exposed, you can use this feature to solve the issue. You can also use it to make your photo look more dramatic. So let me show you how it works. The first thing you need to do to trigger the portrait light feature is to make sure that you are using a photo of a human because it doesn't work with animals, plants or other objects and that's why I'm using a photo of myself. So now when I move to the adjust tab as you see here I have a new button called portrait light and when I tap on portrait light I will get the light source as a bubble on the screen. I can move this bubble anywhere I want plus the light intensity slider as you see here when I move it from 0 to 100 percent there is a big difference in light intensity. This light source is very smart because when you move it close to the subject you see here the light becomes really harsh and when you move it further away it becomes softer. It also works in all directions you don't have any limits and that will help you a lot to enhance your portrait lighting condition and if you don't want to adjust the portrait light yourself you can still tap on the auto button right here or you can go to the suggestions and you will see here a new suggestion called portrait and when you tap on it it will adjust everything for you so when i come back to the portrait light you will see here the direction is different and the light intensity is different as well so the ai can do it for you to save you some time Next, Gboard. And now you can create emoji mashup stickers from multiple emojis. For example, if I used here the robot with the cowboy emoji, as you see here, the first sticker is a robot with a cowboy hat. So you can keep trying different combos to get different stickers. Another example here, a smiley face with the flower. And as you see here, Gboard is trying to give me something that matches the two emojis I'm using. And sometimes it works as well, even if you used the same exact emoji twice. In, that, in this case, I'm using two uh, cowboy emojis and I'm getting this cowboy made of multiple cowboy emojis and so on and so forth. Anyways, I'm going to leave a link in the description from 9 to 5 Google website to show you some really cool stickers that you can create yourself.
Another change is spotted in Gboard. Now when I tap on the mic, as you see here, my Google Assistant started and I'm getting a message says, speak now to dictate. It seems like Gboard is trying to use Google Assistant for the dictation service. But as you see, it doesn't work on my phone. Now I'm speaking and Gboard is not typing anything on the screen. Maybe because I'm on the beta version of Gboard, so the feature is broken for the time being. Anyways, I'm gonna share an article from 9 to 5 Google that will show you how the feature might look like in the future. Next, YouTube. And if you are a content creator and signed in with your channel account on the app, now you will get some visual changes. So let me show you the difference here. As you see, the create button that used to be at the top next to the search, now it's located at the bottom and it has a different icon. It uses the plus sign instead of the camera icon. Also, the notifications button has been pushed towards the top, replacing the old create button. Also, the subscriptions, as you see here, has been pushed to the right a little bit. So it's now replacing the notifications icon. So that's the only difference. They are all visual changes no difference in functionality but it makes more sense now i'm going to show you some really cool changes under the youtube player screen and the first change i have is called chapters as you see here in one of my videos i'm describing each part of my video so you can easily drag your finger on the seek bar to know which chapter you are in and also if you want to jump to the next one you can drag your finger on the seek bar but what's different now, there is a very small arrow next to the description of the part. When you tap on the text, you will get a new card called chapters that will show you all the parts of my video that I labeled. It will show you also the description I wrote and the timestamp with a thumbnail so you can easily navigate the video in this touch friendly way instead of dragging your finger on the seek bar. Next, the new gestures. If you are playing a video and you want to switch to the full screen mode, all you need to do is to swipe up on the video. It will be in full screen. And if you want to exit the full screen, swipe down and you will be back to portrait. You will also get two extra overlay buttons on top of the video. The first one is the autoplay that used to be in this area. And the second one is the captions that used to be in this hidden menu only. And finally, you no longer can tap on the seek bar to jump to a specific part of the video. You can only drag your finger. Next, YouTube music. And now you have the ability to sort your library in alphabetical order. And that works pretty much everywhere. It works under playlists, albums, songs, artists. And let me show you an example here. I'm inside my songs. And now I have two new sorting options. One is called A to Z and the other one is Z to A. There is also a new toggle under the settings. If you take a look here, you will see a new toggle called show your liked music from YouTube. It says here music videos you have marked with a thumbs up in other YouTube apps will show in your likes playlist. So if you don't want this to happen, you can turn off the switch and the liked videos from YouTube will not appear under your YouTube music service and they will be separated. Next, the Your Mix playlist is now called My Super Mix. And as you see here in the description, it says formerly Your Mix. It works exactly the same way, no difference in functionality, just a change in the name. There are also some good news for the free users. First, you can download your songs in playlists instead of downloading the songs individually. And secondly, you can play your uploaded songs on Android Auto. Next, the YouTube Music app is now available on the Apple Watch. And finally, there is a new playlist button that will show up on Android Auto that was missing before. Next, Google Home. And now when you tap on routines, you no longer get an overlay card that will allow you to trigger the routines from the app, but instead you will get this new interface that will allow you to edit each routine. And the only way to activate your routines is by saying the magic sentences you set yourself before. There is also a new feature under routines called presence sensing. This feature will allow you to do certain actions on your smart devices based on your home presence. So for example, you can create a list of actions that will take place when you come back home and another set of actions that will take place when you go away. So let me show you how it works. As you see here, I have two new routines added to the list. The first one is called home and the second one is called away. When I tap on home, the first thing you will see is the trigger 
It says here, when someone comes home, use presence sensing. Once someone from your household, including yourself, comes back home, the actions listed below will be triggered. You can also add an action by tapping on the add action button and then choose any of the smart devices you have set up in your Google Home app. In my case, I have a smart bulb. Here I can it turn it on or off or change the brightness. When I tick on or off, it will give me the option to choose. Same for the brightness. Once you are happy with the changes, tap on add action. So it will be added to the list. And when I tap on the trigger and wait for a few seconds, you will see the home app has access to my location to be able to use this feature. It will also show me the phones that can trigger the routine. In this case, I have my phone and my wife's phone. For my phone, I can see a toggle to turn it on or off, which is not the case with my wife's phone because it says here location access is off. To solve this issue, she needs to give the Google Home app access to her location to be able to use the presence sensing feature. Also keep in mind that your location is not the only way to trigger the presence sensing feature. There are other devices from YAL and Nest that can detect your presence from the on-device sensors, but I don't have any of them at the moment to show you how it works. And finally, you will get this new bill-shaped icon that will allow you to switch between the home and away routines manually. Next, Google Assistant. And the first change is under the snapshot page. Now you will get information about the upcoming events that you might be interested in. And the next change is under the Google Assistant settings. When you go to settings and then scroll down to podcasts, now you can use your Spotify as the default podcast service in your Google Assistant. Next, Google search. And one of the features we have for a while now is the ability to view certain animals in 3D. This feature is now extended to even support cars and one of the cars that you can view in 3D called Volvo XC40 Recharge the 2020 model. When I search for the car, I see the view in 3D button and when I tap on it, I get the 3D model so I can view the car from all angles which is better than the 2D photos plus you can add the car to your environment using the AR technology. So I have here a screen recording to show you how I did it. So now I have that 3D model already in my apartment. I can pinch to change the size of the model. I can also use two fingers to rotate the model. Then I can use my phone camera to move around and to check all the sides of the vehicle. Also keep in mind that this feature can allow you to change the color of the car and also check the interiors, but this didn't work for me. I'm not sure if it's a limitation related to this model or it's something that will be available in the future. Next, Google Lens. And now there is a new shortcut that will allow you to search images directly from Google Chrome or the Google app without the need to open the Google Lens app. So let me show you an example here. This is one of my articles and when I tap and hold on the photo, now I see a new shortcut called search with Google Lens. When I tap on it, the Google Lens app will start automatically and show me the related results. Next, Google Maps. And now you can tap on the navigation arrow and replace it with one of these cars. Here is the red one and the yellow one and finally the green. There are also new exciting features coming to Google Maps in the future, so stay tuned for my next video. Next, Google TV, and this is the replacement for Google Play Movies and the TV app. The major difference between the two is, in Google TV, you can link all your third-party services like Netflix, Disney Plus, or Amazon Prime, all to the Google TV app and get recommendations from all your services in one place. As you see here, it says new TV shows on your services, new movies on your services, and so on. To manage your services, tap on your profile picture and then tap on manage services. You will see all the services you can link and in my case, I'm using Netflix and Amazon Prime. The only drawback I have here, when I try to play any movie from one of my services, it will redirect me to the native app of the service. It doesn't play on the Google TV app itself. So I think it will be a lot better if I can consume the content from the TV app because I don't want to keep switching between apps. Next, 
Google One. And if you are subscribed to the two terabyte plan, now you will get Google's own VPN service for free on top of this plan. And you will also be able to activate the VPN right from the Google One app. But currently I'm not subscribed to this service. So I'm not gonna be able to show you this in the video, but I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you want to know more. Next, Google Apps icons. As you see here, all the icons I have on my home screen share the same colors and same design. They look very similar. And I received three new icons, one for Google Drive, one for Gmail, and the last one for Google Meet. And we should expect more changes coming to the Google Calendar icon, Sheets, Docs, and Slides. But it's not only about the icons. Now you can edit Microsoft documents inside the Google productivity apps, Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the changes I spotted in Google apps in October. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. So I hope you like my video. And if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.